Hello, it's Joey, and today we're making these lovely little envelope pockets which sit or flip over the top of a journal page. And what's absolutely fabulous about these is not only are they incredibly easy to make, but I made them from a pack of little envelopes that are bought in my local Poundland. So I got 50 for a pound and I guess this is something that you might find if you're in the US in a local dollar store. So I've taken those envelopes and I, I had a little play and I've made these envelope flips by decorating them with papers and then I've added a shimmery and a vintage effect. So something extra that I'll show you in this video how to do. I've also had a play at collage on the front, so I've added a cute little bird and some extra embellishments, a label, some sentiments. You could put it on both sides if you want and that would work really well and you could add whatever collage you like. Just make it personal and really enjoy that process. So the way that I like to add them is if I have a blank page in a journal, so maybe you have a personal junk journal that you're looking at filling, you could just put it over the top of a journal page like that and it instantly adds some really special effect I think and each of these not only does it have a beautiful little design on the front but each of these then has a pocket here and a pocket at the back so you could add you could add all sorts of little ephemera into each of those pockets and wouldn't that be absolutely lovely in a journal. So let's get on and make these, they're incredibly easy. I'll show you how to do it step by step and in no time at all you'll have some too. The first thing I'm going to do is take two of those small envelopes. So you need two envelopes per envelope pocket and these envelopes happen to be, as a starting point, about nine centimetres by 15.1 centimetres. What I'm going to do is make life really easy with the decorating by taking off this flap and everything all the way down to the edge of the back of the envelope. So I'll use my little guillotine here to take off the flap and I want as much of the rest of the envelope to remain. So I want to use as much of the envelope as possible but I also want to be quite accurate when I'm trimming and I'll explain why. When I cut this off, the interior of the envelope becomes more visible and it's got this blue and white hash interior and I don't want too much of that to show. So I'm just gonna be relatively careful trimming off this upper piece and the little bit more so that I preserve as much of this as possible to give me more real estate to decorate but also to make sure that I do get rid of any of that cross hatching so that that's not visible. So I'll just take that down and that gives me two little pockets and I guess you could make these yourselves but I feel like this is a great project for just putting together some of your own ephemera really really quickly. And, and it's a lot of fun. I went to my local Poundland recently and just grabbed some items and I challenged myself to have a go at making something with what I bought and this was the result. So now we have obviously still 15 height, but I'm down to 7.4 centimetres width. And it is what it is. I didn't go out and design or pick envelopes of any particular size. I'm just going to work with this. And the next step at this stage, having created two little pocket shaped pieces here, is to cover them with whatever paper you so desire. And I thought I would have a go with this sumptuous French ephemera. So this is from Tracy Fox and it has on it some fantastic script in lots of different directions. Let me see if I can just show you a little bit of that. So I've got beautiful manuscript here with writing going horizontally. I've got some more flourish type script down here. I've got some going this way and I've also got these pretty little teal blue and more simple cornflower blue. There's a stamp there embedded within it. And I just thought that was a really really pretty design but to make these little 
embellishment you can use whatever papers you have so what I'm going to do given the size of my envelope is begin by just halving this to create a piece that I can use to wrap around each of these little envelope pockets so for my starting point which is an A4 piece of copy paper that I've printed on and I'm using 90 GSM I've just taken a piece of paper and I've halved it and I've intentionally ripped it the reason I've done that is I quite like the effect when it's on these exteriors of our little pockets I like the little ratty tatty element that's, that, that shows when we add it to it so that's my starting point what we need to do is take each of these and use them to just wrap around and cover each of our little envelope pockets so I'll take my glue and I'll put I think I'll do glue on the little pocket piece itself and I want to go really close to the edge because I want to help my piece of decorative paper to bind nicely and neatly to the front here so I'm sitting with my little pockets opening at the right and I'm going to take one of my pieces and put this on top and you might notice that I'm being a bit frugal here and I like affordable projects as you might know on my channel this piece of paper half of the A4 is just slightly smaller than my little envelope pocket and I don't mind that I don't mind that partly because we have to live with imperfections in our journaling but I don't mind it as well because I am going to add some extra vintage effect to this and I'm going to use the fact that I've got a little bit of extra white just showing so I guess what I'm saying is I'm not worried that this piece isn't perfectly covering up absolutely everything on the envelope pocket behind the way that I cover this and I've found works having done a few is to lay a piece of the decorative paper on top then turn it over let me get this so I'll turn it so that my spare piece of decorative paper is nearest to me and then I'm going to fold away from myself and fold that down to wrap around the envelope pocket and this process this method seems to be the one that I find most helpful for getting the decorative paper to butt up really neatly against the hinge here against the back of the pocket so I tried a few little ways of doing it and this was how I found it to be the easiest and the neatest so I'll add a little bit of glue to the back again going closely really nice and neatly if I can a line of glue around the edge and then just a bit of a squiggle and fill it in and because I've already folded this it's very easy just to bring that over and wrap it round and then all I'll do is take a pair of scissors and just trim off this excess piece here which does leave me with a lot of little pieces of rectangle of lovely paper and I would love some suggestions as to what, what should I do with my growing pile of little pieces like this aren't they absolutely lovely I've got to do something with those and I've also got to do something with my little flaps that I've cut off because I'm certainly not throwing anything away so I have one envelope pocket done all nicely covered I'm just going to cover the second one and just have a think about which way up this should go so I'm going to have this as the inside so I will just move that out of the way make sure that I have whichever pieces of paper I want on here so that the front of the inside of this flip has the decorative paper that I want I hope that makes some sense really what I'm saying is when you add your decorative papers to this second little envelope pocket 
just have a think about whether you want to be smart about where you place your papers. You might be putting papers on that don't really matter which way up or where you want to place some of the design. So put that on. Sit with the decorative paper towards you. And just feel for where the back of that pocket is so that you're folding as close to it as possible. Like that. I will add a bit of glue and just stick that down. And that will give us very quickly a couple of these pockets to stick together and to decorate. There we are. And I'll just, as I did with the first one, trim that off. So the next step is to add washi at the top, which is a hinge to hold them together. And you can see what I've done is I've put washi on the outside and also on the inside. And I bring them together with a little bit of a gap between the two so that they sit nicely over the top of the journal page. Let me just show you. So when this goes over the journal page, there's just a little bit of give, and I think that's the trick to these, so that they are flexible enough and sit flush down and flat. So let me show you what I do to bring them together, making sure that not only they don't stick together at this stage, but they are positioned as I want them to be. So I want this one to be the inside of the second, so I'll place that down. And the key to this, pick a nice washi. I've chosen one in a very nice neutral colour. Just a gentle pattern on that that seems to go with the vintage design. And I'm going to take my back piece and just place a piece of washi across the top so that there is just a bit less than half of the width of the washi covering up the top of that envelope pocket. Let me turn it over and show you. So on here we've still got plenty of washi left over and there's enough to bind itself to the top of this envelope pocket. I will go back to my first pocket making sure that the openings are where you want them to be. The front of the envelope pocket needs to be placed on top of the washi as neatly as possible but I'm leaving about two millimetres between the two. Let's just show you that. So I've brought them together with this gap and this is the key so that it can sit neatly over the top of the journal page and I'm being very careful that my opening is here my opening is here because that's the way round I want these pockets to be. Press that down so that it's really attached very well and then I'm going to go back in with my washi and just cover up as much of that as I can going over placing my washi over the top like that. And just rip it off. You might not get it perfectly one over the other but that doesn't really matter. Just burnish it down, press it down and press it down in the middle so that the two pieces of washi do come together. And that will give you quite a strong hinge. It's, it's incredible how strong it really is, even though washi is delicate and easy to tear. So we've got, has this worked? Yes. We've got the front that I wanted with a stamp and then I would open it up and I can see that little piece here. And I think the only complexity around making this is making sure that you position your papers where you want them to be. So I'm going to just tidy up. You could rip these if you want that effect. Tidy up the excess washi on the side. And now I've got something that I can decorate and add that vintage and shimmery effect to. And that's going to be fun too. So the next thing I'm going to do is add the shimmery effect, which is some distress type effect on the body of the envelope pocket, but also a little bit of gold and brown, so feeling around the side 
of the envelope pocket. There's a little bit of shimmer that you might be able to see there. It's the effect I used when I made my little faux vintage postcards and I just run a little bit of colour around the side and I just think that really helps. So I will begin by adding a bit, this really does add a lot, adding a bit of shimmer by way of mica to the body and already I can see that beautiful bronze effect. This is Arteza mica powder and I've used gold and bronze mixed together with water, nothing else and that is just a fantastic base. I don't know if you can see, can we find any of these where it's really shown up? I can see shimmer on here and it helps you get that crinkly feel which I really like. I'm also going to add a little bit of dark brown around the sides. Now you could do this with ink absolutely undoubtedly it's just my thing seems to be using these paint sticks and so I'm just dipping them in the water and running around the edge and I said early on not to worry if you have a little bit of a gap of white at the edge where your papers go and this is why because I'm just colouring in with these are little Brian paint sticks which I bought on Amazon no sponsorship they're just really easy to play with and I love them so I'm adding a bit of water and going round and the gold in particular is just stupendous I love it it leaves that dusting of shimmer just gorgeous I found when I played at making these that doing the colouring after you've bound them together with washi is just a bit more helpful than adding the paint and the water to the paper and then trying to add washi on top so I think it's good that we've got the the binding between the two already done. I'm getting a little bit of the paint on my mat but I don't think that matters. Mustn't forget a bit of my, my shimmer on here. Just really adds something and it goes so well with those French ephemera papers that I'm playing with. I'm actually tempted to have a go with all sorts of papers to make these so it'd be interesting to hear if you have a go at these what you use to decorate them that would be great. If you have a gap of white sticking out anywhere, what I do is I just take a little bit on the end of a brush and just go back with a bit more accuracy where I want that to go. Whoopsie! Like that. And I think you can see that it really adds that bronze and vintage feel. Just absolutely love it. So at this stage what we need to do really is to just set those aside and let them dry. But I've been I've been a good girl and I've made a few so that we can carry on and finish them off. It's time to add a little bit of collage on the front. So to give you some examples I've been using birds because I just felt like that and I've just added three or four components. So I've got a sentiment, I've got beautiful birds and in fact these are the birds that I used when I made some bird journaling cards. So this is a bit of a a mishmash project of a couple of things that I've made before and if you watched that video you you will have seen that I, I kind of distressed a digi to begin with and then tore them out. So the digi that I'm using today for these birds is the same one. As you can see it comes on obviously very plain white paper. Again these are Tracy Fox fussy cut birds. Aren't they absolutely gorgeous? What I have done to them before I have cut them out is spray on them with my mica. I have added some texture by way of a stamp and I've added some other little lovely little stamps, maybe a postmark one, maybe some distress style effect in the form of a stamp. So I've added something extra so that they're not just that flat white or printed style but on this occasion rather than tearing them out which is what I did on the journaling cards I have actually neatly cut them because I just felt that would work so I've got a few little elements here and I just thought we would stick a few of them down I've got a piece from a Victoria Designs digi and I like the greens and the botanicals on here so I just think I'll have a little bit of that and maybe what colour shall we have? Do we like the blues or do we like the browns? Should we go all brown? So I think he can sit on there and I want 
don't want, I think I'll have that on the left and I'll use my method of just getting some glue in the middle first so that I can tuck things under and over. So that's relatively quite a large piece. I don't mind it sticking out to the left. I'll have that on there. I'll have, I've got a Tracy label here. What do we think of this one? Think that works? I think so. Nice colours of brown. That can go on. Maybe put that second. It could go under there. Again, I'll have it sticking out to the right. Gorgeous thrush, which, as I say, has been sprayed with a bit of mica and stamped. It's a very dainty effect. It's not incredibly obvious, but I do think it adds something. So the bird can go on there. Let's add glue in the middle because I do want to position my sentiment and perhaps tuck it underneath a little bit. So we'll see how that works. Yeah. And I think I want to see what that says, but bring it together by having the legs of the bird overlapping. So that's great. That can go on. And then I'll just tidy up and put glue under the bits of collage that need sticking down but didn't get glue on the first occasion. There we go, like that. A bit of glue under his legs. Ta-da! And I have had a go at one other design. So I had a go with, I think this is called the Compendium Collection, that's it, the Compendium Collection. Again, it's Tracy Fox. So I thought these papers were absolutely stunning and I like the text on them. So I covered a couple of little envelopes with that. Look, I even lined it up. And then I added a little butterfly. So if your thing is more butterflies than birds, then go to town and add your own little decoration. And these are my envelope pocket flips for your junk journals. I hope you've really enjoyed seeing me make these and maybe you'll have a go yourself. Check out my video where I make those little bird journaling cards because I think you might like to make those too. I hope to see you soon.